Microservice architecture, is an architectural style that structures an application as a collection of services that are highly maintainable and testable. Loosely coupled, so one team's changes won't break the entire app. The benefit to using microservices is that development teams are able to rapidly build new components of apps to meet changing business needs. Independently deployable and organized around business capabilities. Key Benefits As in monolithic software, you only develop in one language, say Java, as the code base. But with microservices, as each service is independent and each service is a new project, each service can be developed in any language that is best fits for the requirement. The developer is only concentrated on a particular service, so the code base will be very small, and the developer will know the code very well. When one service needs to talk with another service, they can talk via API, specifically by a REST service. A REST service is the medium to communicate through, so there is little transformation. Unlike SOA, a microservice message bus is much thinner than an ESB, which does lots of transformation, categorization, and routing. There is no centralized database. Each module has its own, so there's data decentralization. You can use no SQL or a relational database depending on the module, which introduces that polyglot persistence I mentioned before. A lot of people think SOA and microservices are the same thing. By definition, they look the same, but SOA is used for communicating different systems over an ESB, where the ESB takes a lot of responsibility to manage data, do categorization, etc. But microservices use a dumb message bus which just transfers the input from one service to another, but its endpoint is smart enough to do the aforementioned tasks. It has a dumb message bus, but smart endpoints. As microservices communicate through REST, the transformation scope is very small only one service is dependent on another service via API call. Choosing a microservice architecture Microservices expertise Without proper skills and knowledge, building a microservice application is extremely risky. Still, just having the architecture knowledge is not enough. You need to have DevOps and containers experts since the concepts are tightly coupled with microservices. Also, domain modeling expertise is a must. Dealing with microservices means splitting the system into separate functionalities and dividing responsibilities. A complex and scalable application. Microservice architecture will make scaling and adding new capabilities to your application much easier. So if you plan to develop a large application with multiple modules and user journeys, a microservice pattern would be the best way to handle it. Enough engineering skills. Since a microservice project comprises multiple teams responsible for multiple services, you need to have enough resources to handle all the processes. Challenges. Building you have to spend time identifying dependencies between your services. Be aware that completing one build might trigger several other builds, due to those dependencies. You also need to consider the effects that microservices have on your data. Testing, integration testing, as well as end-to-end -end testing, can become more difficult, and more important than ever. Know that a failure in one part of the architecture could cause something a few hops away to fail, depending on how you've architected your services to support one another. Versioning, when you update to new versions, keep in mind that you might break backward compatibility. You can build in conditional logic to handle this, but that gets unwieldy and nasty, fast. Alternatively, you could stand up multiple live versions for different clients, but that can be more complex in maintenance and management. Deployment, yes, this is also a challenge, at least in initial setup. To make deployment easier, you must first invest in quite a lot of automation as the complexity of microservices becomes overwhelming for human deployment. Think about how you're going to roll services out and in what order. Logging, with distributed systems, you need centralized logs to bring everything together. Otherwise, 
the scale is impossible to manage. Monitoring, it's critical to have a centralized view of the system to pinpoint sources of problems. Debugging, remote debugging isn't an option and it won't work across dozens or hundreds of services. Unfortunately there's no single answer to how to debug at this time. Connectivity, consider service discovery, whether centralized or integrated. In this video tutorial series, we are going to show you how to develop production-ready microservice sample project using Spring Boot and Spring Cloud frameworks. Phase 1 tutorial series, we will hope to develop discovery service, config service, auth service, API gateway, and student microservice as this picture. But in the future we will hope to continue the series as much as possible. You can check out our source code from public GitHub repository. Thank you for watching, have a nice day.